And let's do it. We uh, did the NFC North yesterday. It was awesome to have Greg Jennings and Matt Forte to kind of win out. Who will sweep who? Who's going to be on top? And today we're going to hit up the NFC South on the program at Up and Adam Show. If you have questions or what your questions are uh, about these divisions and these uh, teams as they try to dig their way to the top. Uh, if you look at the odds over at FanDuel Sportsbook, uh, number one sportsbook, by the way, if you want to go have some fun, go do it over there, especially um, they got NBA action going on as well. The Falcons are favorites at minus one. 120. The defending champion Bucks are, what is that? Oh, plus 290. They're followed by the Saints at plus 340. Panthers, they're a long shot. I love a long shot at plus 1400. And we like what we're hearing. Listen, we went to Carolina. Carolina came online. They're partying. They're having fun uh, with FanDuel Sportsbook as well. They've got Canales who could not have been more intense and serious and ready to get the best out of Bryce Young. Bryce Young looking great. So there should be some rebound action going on. And I like those odds at plus 1400. We're going to start this morning, everybody, on this Friday. It's an Up and Adams summer Friday um, with the Falcons. Let's do it. My question for this squad down in Atlanta. We've talked a lot about Kirk and Michael Penix and all of that. How much will this veteran who went from Washington then to the Vikings and, you know, whatever, and the primetime splits and all that, how much will the presence and the play of Kirk Cousins coming off an injury elevate the playmakers on the Falcons? This is the video game you want to play with. This is the Madden team, right? Bijan, Drake, London, Kyle Pitts, all top 10 picks, so talented, uh, and a large part to the quarterback situations in Atlanta, none of them have really gotten to perform at the level of their talent, at least not yet. And I do expect it to change with Cousins, um, at least theoretically, until we all see it. I don't know. I, I guess my question would be, what is the ceiling for this trio? How good are they? Is it possible um, it was more than the quarterback situation holding them back? I hope not. Uh Got to see a breakout year out of that group. Cousins, new OC, Zach Robinson. They got to help unlock another level to the offense. But we are, I mean, literally, what is it today? May 23rd. It is May 23rd talk. Um, and on paper, it looks great. On Madden, it would look great. If I was a quarterback, I would want to play there. And then they've got Penix. They're ready to take over if anything happens. Like, they should be highly favored, okay? And we'll see what team actually takes the field uh, if they want to unseat the Bucks atop the division. Speaking of the Buccaneers, hit me up at Up and Adam. I'm sure you guys have questions for D-Butt. I've got my whole vitamin lineup to do in the break. Rich is going to be upset about that. But uh, listen, my question for the good old Tampa Bay Buccaneers feels like it was 20 years ago that they were celebrating that Super Bowl win um, during pandemic. Tom Brady leading them on that crazy run uh, at the end of the season to lift another trophy. My question for this 2024 squad is, were they a one hit wonder with Baker? Um, I want to say right now, I don't believe that. I, that's the answer to the question, but that's kind of the way they're being treated right now, if we're being honest, right? Look at what's going on with the old sports book. And I think across the media landscape in general, Falcons are the favorites. They're the ones being talked about as if they're favorites. And I get that because they bring in Kirst, they, uh, Kirk and they draft our boy, Michael. But I kind of think, I don't know. Bakers, why this is going to work and why the success is going to continue to carry over. Listen to Todd Bowles from this week on Baker Mayfield finally paid, finally rewarded, but still not being treated like the man along with the rest of them. Um, and really, it's about Baker that uh, Bowles is talking about here and his new OC, Liam Cohen, who I don't know much about. Baker's been great. You know, he's eager, he's hungry, all the guys are, and we're just ready to get started. When Baker's been in the offense before, he's a very bright guy, and him and Liam has hit it off from the start, so we trust Baker to make the right call. Okay, Bowles touched on the one different variable here in Tampa, and I think Canales was, and I talked to him, a huge factor for Baker last season. So it's good to hear he's on a positive start with Cohen. And those two did overlap in LA during Baker's stint with the Rams. So I think there's at least a comfort level between the two. And I'm glad that Bulls is reinforcing it here. If they can build, they're going to progress. It's that simple. Um, and I don't think it's the Falcons division. I don't. I think it's the Bucks division unless they lose it. And I actually think these two are going to be step in step for the division title. Once again, Cam Jordan, don't bite my head off. Let's go to Jordan's team here. How much longer is Cam Jordan going to play? That is probably my biggest truth. If I'm being personal, I'm not doing this from like a media vantage point. Like, 
how much longer has Cam got? And he's he deserves a ring. He's been trying to get one. He's been doing his thing year in, year out. It's all that matters to him. Nothing else matters to him. No records, no place in history, no legacy of his own. He wants a ring. And, you know, outside of how long will he play, it's did Garrett Carr figure it out at the end of last year? Because the only way they're going to get anywhere near uh, trying to play in a Super Bowl at home there in New Orleans for the first time in a long time. It flew under the radar, I feel like, last year, if we're being honest. And Saints fans, you know, I, I love you and I, I watch for you and I'm vigilant for you. And I paid maybe closer attention to Derek Carr because there were some early season struggles, for sure. But then he kind of ended on a heater, low key, right? Check this out. Derek led the Saints to four wins over the final five games. He threw a league-leading 14 touchdown passes, more than anybody else, guys, and he led the NFL in completion percentage and passer rating. So who was talking about that? How many people out of 100 on the streets here uh, in the Hollywood Hills would be able to tell you that was Derek Carr who had those kind of numbers? Nobody. Nobody paid attention to it because I know the Saints didn't deserve the attention because they were out of the race already. It's significant for 2024, isn't it, though? There's another thing to keep an eye on, and that is the fact that their OC from last year, um, Pete Carmichael, he gone. He's out. Former Vikings OC and uh, recently 49ers passing game coordinator Clint Kubiak is taking over. How much is that going to help Derek? Does it help Derek? Is he going to build off that success? Um, is it going to set the system back, set him back? Uh, here is Derek Carr Tuesday afternoon talking about the new offense. A lot of fun and just been working extremely hard at it. Uh, you know, learn from last year, uh, obviously going through that process and, you know, learning this one this year, found found some ways to do it better or more efficient and learn faster. And so it's been it's been good. That's really exciting for me. This level of detail is exciting because when you're held to that standard, you, you know, usually as a professional, you play that standard. So um, I'm excited about these coaches because they hold us to it every single day. Uh, I'm excited about that. I like the energy. I just like how Derek's talking. And then you have to think about the institutional knowledge and osmosis, carry the one and bring it over that Kubiak's bringing from when he hung busted hangs with uh, Kyle Shanahan again. Okay, is how much is that going to help Derek bring that, you know, bring all that over and let him play his best football? There's a lot of talent in New Orleans still. And if Carr can play up to this standard that he's talking about right here and he's being held to the standard that he is going to be held to by Clinton company. Like I would be stupid. And so would you to sleep on my squad, the saints, especially when they know they're a building, which means so much to them historically. So part of the culture, um, one that they're welcoming Sean Payton back to uh, at some point in the season uh, as the Broncos head coach, like it's going to be an emotional season leading to a Super Bowl being played in that building. Um, okay. If you guys have any questions, hit me up at the, in the chat. Let's see who wins the NFC South. I'm going to put in my vote. I'm on the YouTube chat right now. I'm going to pick. It doesn't say who picked what, right? I don't have to, I'm not going to get in trouble. Um, okay. Let's see. Memorial day. We aren't going to have a show guys. Messy bun. That's me. Falcons rise up. Are they going to win the division? Guys, let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Um, and I will wrap it up here with the Carolina Panthers. Uh, unanswered question would have to be, have they done enough for Bryce Young to have success? And then the sub question is, what is success for the Carolina Panthers? Uh, I guess if we're batting it around, you, you never know what can happen. This season in Carolina is less about wins and losses. And I don't mean to sound, you know, make them sound I don't know, not exciting, but this is all about helping dig Bryce Young out of something and elevating him above the fray. Development is what I would say this entire thing is about. So speaking to Coach Canales, not long ago, right before free agency opened in March, they were still figuring things out. And I asked him straight up, Bryce, what's your deal? What is your plan specifically? And I don't think I'd get this good of an answer on how he's going to help get the best out of his QB and help him develop. I'm going to lean on his poise. One of the first things I mentioned about Bryce is when you watch him play in college football and you saw him in those big games on TV, whether it was early in the season mm -hmm. or whether it was later in the season against really good opponents, if you look behind the face mask, the eyes are the same. His countenance is the same. Hmm. And he's just cold blooded. And so those things were what really, you know, encouraged me to say this is going to be the top guy coming out because he's the guy. 
He is him. That's the, is that what people say nowadays? He, he is him. Yeah. So, sure. Um, I, so I, I mean, just, you just called Bryce Young cold blooded. I like that. Yeah. Oh, that's I like I hearing that. And so now it's about just giving him tools, um, giving him the green light to use those tools in an appropriate fashion and playing a, a brand of offensive football that we're proud of. I think Canales is going to get the best out of it. Mr. Uh, put on some weight, Bryce Young. You talk about adding tools and pieces like his coach is saying. Clearly, he's been working in tandem with his GM, Dan Morgan, this offseason. And there's some notable additions. They bring in coaches offensive mindedly, which I love. They trade up to get Xavier Leggett in the first round. They trade for Steelers receiver Deontay Johnson, who literally Nobody has more room for growth in public perception, stat sheet, like a uh, court of public opinion than Deontay Johnson. He, if there's one, he doesn't have to do much to sort of be seen uh, in a completely different light. And he's talented. Get, let's get the best out of him. Let's, you know, rewrite his narrative while we're at it. They invested in the O-line in free agency. They get a couple guards. They got, or they got Robert Hunt. They get um, out of Seattle. They get Damian Lewis as well. So I think when free agency started, I was a little like, eh, or go get a receiver. They did it, right? And it's a huge difference from what Bryce walked into last year. And of course, he got hit so, so, so much that you got to think getting him offensive line help is going to be a huge thing. It sort of filled holes that I'm happy with. Um, the receivers, are they good enough? That's the question. Is Adam Thielen... Is that enough? Is that like a true, is he your number one? Can he be your number one? With Johnson, with, you know, like with the Rook, are they uh, improved enough to have something cooking this year? I'm trying to figure out like what would be, and I'd love for Panthers fans to tell me. Um, I, I'll ask Luke Keekley when he comes on next, like time. Um, what is the ceiling for this team? What's a realistic expectations? I don't know if I, I don't know if it's, ex if I expect them to make the playoffs. I think it's, you know, I think it's Atlanta and Bucks ducking or duking it out the entire way. Saints can be squeaky and tough, and so I like them. Um, I think it's more about develop and protect your core. Don't ruin. Don't. I think it's like don't ruin. Don't ruin your quarterback and then it's also just give some hope to Carolina uh and make it exciting so you guys saw the odds go do your thing over at FanDuel Sportsbook have some fun with that we're gonna take actually no let me look at some YouTube comments. um what did you say oh great Darius is already ready to go let's do this